Welcome back. I am I am grateful and honored to introduce our next guests. Susan and Len Lodish have been traveling the world on a tandem bicycle. Take that in for a second. Two wheels, two people around the world to benefit ALS, to raise money for those struggling with ALS or Lou Gehrig disease, named after the famed baseball player you probably would know. And if you haven't seen these two, I'd be a little bit surprised. Susan has been a longtime freelance theater director. She has been a judge for the Barrymore Awards, which is Philadelphia's version of the Tonys. And so this woman spends a lot of time in theater and around the stage. Len is a marketing professor at the Wharton School. He is also a wolf pack wolf. He's a really nice guy though, I promise. Uh, all bark, no bite. And he is an angel investor. And the best name for these two, in my estimation, is Angels on Two Wheels. Susan and Len, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. We're so excited. I have to admit, when I when I learned about your travels 25 years around the world on your tandem bicycle, I thought, I need to know these people, even if I never do get to interview them. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about how your tandem adventures began. All right, I think I'll, I'll start and Susan will, will add as appropriate. Okay. Um, my mother, when we were growing up, when I was a little kid, was a little bit overcautious about what she would let us do and I loved my bicycle and I wanted to go on long bike hikes and she wouldn't let me. And so the minute I got um, into college and was able to control my own life, I started, I, I commuted on my bicycle and rode a lot. And I had a dream about one day riding across the country. And I said, if you're gonna ride across the country, and spend 45 days away, I wanted to go with you. <laughs> okay, so that though doesn't really tell me why you couldn't do it on two bicycles. <laughs> the answer is... Um, I couldn't keep up with him. <laughs> and he would always go ahead and wait for me on my bike. And I would criticize whether she's shifting right and doing all kinds of other stuff, which is the typical reason why couples get tandem. There's tandems, there's been books written about it, but there are some uh, advantages to a tandem bike that a lot of people don't know. One is because there's a fixed chain that connects the person in front to the person in the back, the captain and the stoker, the uh, you both can be pedaling as hard as you can and the bike will go forward even though people may be of different abilities or different strengths. That's one thing. The other thing that's uh, pretty important is if you're going fast on a regular bike and you have a blowout on one of your tires, you can really get hurt because you can go over the handlebars and the bike will flip over. In a tandem, because there's two people, the center of gravity is so much lower. We had a, a blowout once at 35 miles an hour and the bike just stopped. You know, it slowly stopped. And so that's given uh, at least me and I'm, I'm the captain. I get to decide how fast we go and shift the gears and put on the brakes. And she just uh, directs me and takes pictures in the back, right? I love that. And that's great information. That's great information. I would never have known. By the way, Len, I just I just want to share that my now 89 year old dad, his mother didn't let him learn to ride a bicycle because she was that protective and that concerned that, oh, my goodness, something should happen to her little prince. Nevertheless, he did teach both my brother and me to ride our bicycles. And I think that's a real sense of pride for him. <laughs> So you're not alone with the protective mom uh, brigade. Right. Right. So now, have you taught to ride a bike? I've taught a lot of people how to ride a bike. Probably 
the most famous person I've taught to ride a bike is Jack Abraham, who um, started a number of companies and I helped him start his first company. He started the Atomic Venture Studio and their most famous company is Hims and Hers. All these ads for erectile dysfunction you see on TV, that's Jack's company. And, <laughs> and you taught him to ride a bicycle. That's correct, yes. None of your claims to fame are going to surpass that, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so how did the, how, basically you turned these into vacations with a purpose then. How did you start riding to benefit ALS? Okay, it's not, it's one of these things where something happened that wasn't my idea, it wasn't our idea, that really changed our life. We did, I decided I wanted to ride across the country. Susan decided she wanted to ride with me. And then we said, and, and I had- both decided that we would ride a family. That's correct. Okay. And then the question was, well, maybe we should not just waste the time. We should try to, you know, have some people contribute something per mile uh, for charity. And my cousin Jules had come down with ALS about two years before our first ride. And we naturally wanted to do whatever we could to see if there could be a cure. You know, if we could do something to help find a cure and help other ALS patients. So um, we rode across the US and had, uh, there wasn't computers in those days, or there were computers, but there wasn't cell phones. There it wasn't, wasn't email. There wasn't email. So um, we told people we'd send them postcards along the way, and we did. And uh, when we were done, we raised, I don't know, ten or $11,000, presented a check to Ellen Phillips, who runs the Philadelphia and was really a founder of the Philadelphia ALS Association because her husband uh, passed away from ALS. And she said, you know, and we gave her the check and ready to leave. And she said, you know, you guys have this group of people that now understands how important uh, helping out with the ALS cause is. Why don't you do a ride again next summer? And we said, you know, that's an interesting idea. And once we did it the next summer, then we did it the next summer. <laughs> and uh, 25 years later, we finally, uh, by the way, we actually have stopped our formal rides for ALS. At, at our age, it's getting a little bit more difficult to do all kinds of different things. And for the last five years, we've had our uh, kids and three grandsons uh, with us and just the coordination and everything is, is, is gotten impossible. <laughs> yeah, it sounds a little bit like um, a strategic, you know, a strategic move as opposed to the two of you can pack up and pick up. Okay. So that, that becomes a little bigger, but I know that you're still very, very big supporters of the uh, ALS community. And thank you for that. I also have a cousin who passed from ALS and it's a horrific disease, um, one of the worst. and. I would love, as I know our viewers would love to hear some of the highlights of these trips, because you have been just everywhere. I mean, 25 years of rides is a, is a lot of rides. Well, and one of the interesting things, uh, which a lot of people haven't, I don't think, realized about these rides is if you're going to raise money for charity, you might as well have some fun while you're doing it. And a lot of these trips are hard, but they're also very enjoyable and interesting. And I think most importantly, we get to meet new people from all over the world who realize what we're trying to do. And it's amazing once they know what we're doing, how people will, will chip in to help and uh, be as uh, helpful as possible. So I understand that you, the places you've stayed along the way, people have 
you know, welcomed you and just, you know, tracked your progress and wanted to be a part of the whole thing along with you. And you also did something remarkable along many of these trips was to stop in at the research centers and learn more about what's being done uh, to combat ALS. So yeah, that was um, very interesting. And I learned one of the things is that it attacks people who are in better shape than people who are not in better shape. Um, really? You're, yes. And part of it, uh, well, it, it's unrelated, but um, many more football players get it. And I think it's because they get knocked around that it does something that causes it to make it easier for ALS to start. But also just statistically, if you're in really good shape and you've worked out, you're more likely to get ALS. The odds of getting ALS are pretty small. So it's not a reason not to work out, but it, it still uh, was one of the things that I was most interested in just learning about. That's amazing. That's amazing. So what are some of the other highlights that you could share with us? Ooh. Um, you want to talk about any, Susan, and then I'll uh, think. Well, my favorite was in Argentina, where we became celebrities. They had a ticker tape parade <laughs> in our honor. First of all, they hadn't seen very many tandems, and they were excited that we were coming to their town and so we showed off our tandem and it uh, became um, an excuse for a big barbecue and people came around. And when we left the next morning, we were surprised. We had 15 or 20 people riding with us for about the first 10 or 15 miles. And people leaned out of their windows and threw confetti at us. So it became a real um, happening. That's not only is it wonderful, but the, the ability to educate people along the way, both about ALS and about tandem bicycle riding. Well, the, the other thing was uh, how we ended up getting into that town. I still remember I was scared and it really was scary, I guess is the only way to describe it. But we were on a main drag from <clears throat> between, we were going from Cordoba, which is in the mountains in the center of the country to uh, Buenos Aires and then to uh, Montevideo, Uruguay. And we were on the main road and it was a one lane on either side, but it had a nice shoulder. And because it was the South in South America and it was our summer, it was their winter, it got dark early. And for a number of um, miles of the trip, we'd been going along the road and there was greenery on the side of the road and these rodents that looked like big rats. They were maybe two feet long. Susan said there were mer meerkats would come out of the green toward the road, towards us, see the cars and then run back. And we were about eight miles from the town where we had planned on staying and the bike just collapsed. Uh, the mechanism, um, the bearings in the pedal evidently gave up and the pedal wouldn't work. So we stopped the bike and started to walk. And I figured we're gonna get eaten by these meerkats because they're still coming. We didn't start walking our bike for the six miles for more than a minute. A pickup truck stops and thank God I had enough Spanish to be able to um, at least communicate, not beautifully, but communicate with the driver, telling him what happened. We needed a, a store for bicicletas. And um, he took us to a bike shop. And that's when he, the bike 
store owner who was also a professional bike rider or a retired professional cyclist got all the people in town to uh, interview us on the TV show, to provide barbecue for us, to give us a place to stay, et cetera, et cetera. What and amazing so story. Yeah. Yeah, and good. what a difference you've made in so many people's lives and the difference they've made in yours. I'm sure you're much richer for it. Exactly. Yeah. So tell us how can our viewers get involved? How can they learn more um, about how to get involved either with the ALS Association, uh, fundraising, do something like this on their own if they should feel so inspired? Oh. Absolutely. They could, anybody who will raise money to find a cure for ALS, um, they're doing God's work. It's not easy. I've actually also been working with two Israeli companies um, as an advisor that are developing, hopefully, cures for ALS and helping them go through the trial process and help them to raise money, etc. Uh, because there's enough patients around the world that um, a cure for ALS will not only be life-saving for all these people, but it will make money. And um, I'm trying to help these companies be as efficient as possible in getting to where they want to go. Okay, if you want one more story, because there was one, one more story. <laughs> there's one more story that I think um, is probably the most compelling in terms of how good people are. One of our trips, the one where we visited the research um, outpost, was down the east coast of the US from Bar Harbor, Maine to Philadelphia. We rode through New York, metropolitan New York. We rode over the George Washington Bridge. And I figured I would take Route 1 down to Philly, which is not a super highway. And I knew it had a shoulder. So I got on Route 1 and didn't realize that right outside of Newark, it changes from a regular highway to the Pulaski Skyway. Indeed, it does. I grew up in that area. <laughs> well, if you look at the... And we got on the Pulaski Highway, and before we knew it, we were on a road that had no shoulder and had two lanes on either side, no shoulder, no uh, nothing in the middle. There was no place to ride a bicycle except in front of some car who's banging their horn at you and really upset at you. And um, there was no shoulder, no, anyway. No exit. I mean, no. Oh, there was no exit. We couldn't nowhere to get out, nowhere to hide. We turn around to go back the way we came because we would run into these cars. So we figured we're just gonna have to pedal to the next exit. It's and about 12 miles. <laughs> no, it was maybe five or six miles. <laughs> we didn't know. Just as it's getting really bad and everybody's honking, all of a sudden it stopped. And or the, the noise stopped and we didn't hear anybody behind us. We looked, a gentleman in a pickup truck had put his blinking lights on, was behind us and he was shielding us from traffic and he shielded us from traffic for five miles and we were pedaling as fast as we could because we, you know, we didn't want him to lose that much time. But he shielded us from traffic for five miles. Then we got off and waved at him, but he didn't stop. Still didn't have any idea who he was, but I think there's a very reasonable probability that something serious could have happened to us in that space if that gentleman hadn't saved us. So well, we basically to... angels were sent to help you, right? When you do good, others are sent to help you do it. Yeah, well, that's, that's really example. the truth. And we're glad for we're glad for the safety he provided and the fact that you got off the Pulaski Skyway safely. Yeah. Really, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, people Again, who know it understand how terrible that was. It's not even fun in a car. 
That much I can tell you. Exactly. Thank you again so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure and good luck with your future endeavors. I know there will be a next next. Thank you. If anyone is interested in donating to the ALS organizations on behalf of Susan and Len Lodish, feel free to please go to alsannualcelebration.org. That's ALS annualcelebration.org and you'll find all the donation information there. Thank you so much for helping this very important cause. Thank you.